What sort of magic does this crazy white box hold? Let's find out together. So I thought I would do just a quick video, just something interesting that I dug out of the box and I thought I would share it with you. This magical little white box is a standalone SD card USB drive duplicator. I didn't even know these things existed until a couple years ago when I got involved with using Raspberry Pis. And I realized it's probably better to frequently back up your SD cards. I mean, you spend all this time making amazing retro Pi compilations and working really hard to make the perfect Amiga emulator. And then what happens when that SD card eventually uh, dies out? It corrupts. You turn it off in the middle of a write. Something terrible happens. Yeah, well, if you know what it's like to write 64 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte SD card images, you know it takes a lot of time to do a backup. And we all know the longer it takes and the more involvement you have to participate in means you're less likely to do it. Well, that's when this little guy showed up and I thought to myself, this is what everybody who owns a Raspberry Pi needs, a way of taking a single SD card that you've spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of your life putting together only to have it fail and being able to move it to another one quickly, easily, and then being able to restore it when you need to. So this little device, its whole point is to make one or two copies of a master USB drive. How great is that? Now, for the purposes of this demo, we're going to be duplicating micro SD cards. And we're gonna use adapters and all sorts of interesting things here. I do have a couple of interesting things to show you as well. But this little device all by itself, no computer. Look at this, there's absolutely no place to plug a computer in here. This is a 100% standalone device. You can put it on a shelf somewhere and forget about it until you need it. So how does this little guy work? What does it look like? How does it operate? So before we do that, I wanna show you what we're gonna be working with today. So we do have this standard um, micro SD card. It's a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, nothing special. We have a couple of different readers here. These are standard uh, USB based SD card readers. Nothing special about these. I even got one with an extension or uh, an adapter rather, this adapter will adapt this guy into a standard size SD card, which we will then put into this USB reader. And we're gonna stick this in here and see how that works. And last but not least, I, I found this neat little USB reader and I just had to share it with you. So this in itself is a USB card reader. I'll give you a good look at it. And this cool part is, is it works on both. It has a micro USB plug on one side, flip it over and you've got a USB A plug. So this was great when we used to have Android phones that had um, micro USB. And then you could just take it back to your computer, plug it in, drop your stuff onto it, flip it over, plug it into your phone. Like that's why I probably originally bought this thing. But you're probably wondering, but where's the SD card go? There's no S, there's really like no SD card slot. So this looks like a flash drive. This is just a flash drive. Shane, you're tricking us here. I swear I'm not. The actual SD card plugs in. I'm trying to make sure, looking at my preview, making sure you guys can see. Yeah, it's right there. SD card goes right inside the USB A plug. That's freaking awesome and it works. <laughs> I love gizmos and gadgets like this. So we're going to use a plethora of these and see how it works out. And you'll be able to see from the device right away whether it works or not. So now that we've got some, we've got some stuff to play with here, I've got two readers, two 64 gigabyte cards, and I got the box. Now some of these, there's a couple of these types of boxes that will run on AA batteries. You could actually put batteries and then it's actually portable. Imagine you go out for an important photo shoot, right? That's the other reason I could see using something like this. You're out on an important photo shoot, you shoot 200 images, right? And you want to back up now. 
right? You don't want to have to worry about anything bad happening. To those You'll never be able to get those again, right? So backing them up on the go would be great. And if you have like the RAV Power File Hub or something like that, that works too. But this little guy, if it were, this one was not battery powered. Uh, if it were battery powered, it'd be pretty cool. Mine only runs on st a standard included adapter. So I've got this, I'm just going to move this guy over here. And it just plugs right in. Nothing scary, nothing weird. Uh, it is a proprietary, it's not totally proprietary. I mean, it's the sort of plug you would expect to see. You could replace it if you lost it, not that proprietary. So the plug itself is not proprietary. So I've got the power plugged in. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to turn this guy on. And it's got a brilliantly lit green screen. Let me see if I can move this a little closer here, get you guys a better look. So I'm trying to, there we go. All right, so you can see here on the uh, video that um, it's got, it's got a, a couple line display here so you can see what's going on and you have menu options you can toggle through. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do in here. So we'll run through the menu items here and what we have are copy, compare, com copy and compare, a utility and setup. So let's go through these different options. It's going to be really difficult to see here. I'm going to do my best so I can see too, which is probably not going to work out very well, but hopefully this turns out okay. So I'm just going to run through real quick um, the copy here. Let's see. Copy, compare, copy, compare. That should be pretty simple. What's in this utility? Utility has device info. Check USB for viruses. And I wonder how it does that. I mean, there's no virus definitions or anything. That's an interesting feature. Uh, let's see, capacity check, that could be fun. Format fat and measure speed. Erase contents, sysinfo, system update. That's actually kind of cool. There's some, there's some useful utility stuff in here. Not what I just do. All right. Let me see, where were we here? Okay, so that was utility and then setup. Let's see what sort of goodies we can do in here. Selecting the copy area. So you can either copy the entire disk or you can just copy the data area. Uh, whether you want the button to be beeping, the language you're using, that's pretty much it for that. Whole media, right? Hang on a second, wrong one. There we go. And then that's pretty much it. So let's do a couple of quick things here. And I'm gonna go ahead and Let's see here. Let's see if I can make this guy work better. This is one of those days I wish my cameraman was available. All right, so I'm going to plug this guy into number one. And it's got to be plugged in the right way, of course. All right. And so I see it has lit up here, but I'm not seeing a green light. So let's go ahead and go to those utilities we were talking about. Device info. Let's see what that gives us, shall we? Partition, it, so it basically says what the sizes of the partition are. USB, 59.26 gigabytes. No second partition, no third partition. Interesting, huh? Can I get back out of here? There we go. Device info, check USB for virus. We're not going to check the USB for virus. Capacity check. So it's checking... Passed once, failed one. I don't know what that is actually checking. Maybe, I guess maybe it's making sure that what it's reporting is what it actually has. Format fat, we're not going to do that. Measure speed. It says it's measuring. And here it says uh, read 17, write 16. So what a neat little, um, what a neat little tool here. Oops, I hit that again. I'm doing this backwards and upside down. I didn't really want to measure the speed again. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and go into our copy utility because that's really what we're talking about, right? So here's copy. And we're going to go ahead and select it. And it says USB zero already. So we've got a green light. Does it show up on there? Yep. We've got a green light, but we have nothing to put in here yet. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to plug it into slot two. You know, USB, you get it wrong. You guess wrong every time, even though you got a 50-50 chance. And so it parses it, and it says one is ready. We are ready to copy one 
unit. So if you put another one in here, it'll copy them both at the same time. So that's really where the savings comes in, right? I mean, sorry, I keep looking at my preview screen because I'm trying to avoid getting the light glinted off of here, but some of you say it bothers you when you see me looking off camera like I'm looking at a teleprompter. So maybe I'll just look down here. So we'd be ready to go with this copy process. And we will actually do a copy here in just a minute, um, or we'll start one anyway, and we'll let you see. Fast, easy, yes, fast, eh, maybe not so fast. All right, so I'll pull that guy out. We'll go back into copy mode here. And just to show you that it's, um, so it's waiting for the master. So it's skimming the master again. And I've seen cases, this particular reader is pretty old. And I've seen actually problems with it. See, it says bad master. I've seen problems with that before. So I'm going to pull this guy out. And I'm going to put this down for just a second. And we're going to take the SD card out. And I'm going to put it into this other unit. This other SD card reader. All right. And see if I can. Okay, so it says waiting for master. Every time. All right, I plug that in, and it says ready. Zero or ready. The master's ready, but none of the, you can't say slave anymore, right? So the master's ready. How about the, the, the copy, the copy slot? Plug that in. All right, now it says one is ready. So we're ready to copy. So copying could be no more simple. Push the button, and it starts. You get a readout. You get a readout telling you, again, I'm trying to keep an eye on the uh, preview screen. You get a readout telling you exactly what the percentage is, how many uh, gigs or megs it has copied, and it goes. And it just, it does this until it's done. So, right now, just to give you an idea, uh, as we've been talking, I'm trying to get the light off of there. As we've been talking, it has not yet hit 1% yet. It is copied 50, sorry, I got to look at it, 600 megs so far, it just hit 1%. So is this guy super, super fast? Is it super efficient? Is it super effective? It may not be fast, but it also isn't tying up your computer. It's also not something you're going to worry about, a power outage or something. Well, I guess power outage would ruin this, but I'm talking about with your computer, right? If you have to reboot your computer, you're not stuck trying to read or write at 128 gigabyte image. You just plug it in here and it does the duplication for you. And so I can tell you, uh, just to give you an idea as to some of the results. So you're probably wondering, can you copy a smaller one onto a bigger one? I've had that work successfully. In other words, I've had 50 gigabytes on one and I had 128 gigabyte card in the other slot and I've done a data only and it's been successful, but I've also done it several times where it has not been successful. The copying the data area only, I have found to be sketchy. I have also never been able to really successfully clone, like say, uh, you would expect maybe if you took a 64 gigabyte drive and a 128 gigabyte drive, if it would take the 64 gigabyte partition repartition this guy and put the 64 gig on there while leaving an unpartitioned 64 gig. It's not that smart. This device, and, and listen, I'm sure that this has gotten better over time. This is the device that I have, and I, knew there's, I know there's newer models, and there's about a billion manufacturers that make this type of a device. They even look like this one. But my point is, uh, if you're using a straight clone of one size to another, it's pretty reliable. Now, as you probably already know, not all SD cards are created equal. In other words, you could buy two 64 gigabyte cards and one of them only has a total available space of 62.5 gigabytes. And that has nothing to do with the formatting. It has to do with the way the cards are constructed. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a hardware guy. Please, in the comments below, I know I'll get chastised because I'm not properly explaining how wafer memory works. But suffice to say, if you buy two 64 gigabyte cards, format them both, the chances are very unlikely, unless they're the exact same card, the same manufacturer, the same model, make, and everything identically the same, you're probably not gonna see the same amount of free space. Uh, you saw earlier, this 64 gigabyte card was saying that it had a 59 gigabyte partition on it. 
So that actually got quite a few gigabytes cut off. Part of that, of course, is the file system and formatting it, but not all cards are created equal. So before you rely on this guy to be your backup partner, your backup buddy, make sure you do one and test it. That's my recommendation. I would also recommend that you buy two of the exact same card, just like we were discussing, the exact same card, the exact same model, the exact same brand, make, model, serial number, the whole bit if you can. My point is, make sure they're as identical as possible and your copy will be much more successful. So we are now at 6%. I've managed to vamp just a little bit. So is this device right for you? If you don't have a Raspberry Pi and you're not or you're not mass cloning SD cards, this would be great if you are doing a mass production. When I say mass, I'm talking about dozens or a hundred copies of an SD card. Promotional thing, you don't want to pay a professional duplicator. There's a number of different reasons why. If you could make two copies for the for the cost of one or for the time that it takes to do one, that's value add and you could probably, this would probably work out well for you. However, if you're a general hobbyist, unless you're very Pi centric, like I said, for Pi, this is great. I love being able to back up my retro Pi image totally outside the computer. I plug it in, I turn it on, I hit the copy button. And even though it takes, so we're at what, 7% and it's been five minutes. Somebody do the math on the other side for me. It gonna be a while. So if it's gonna be a while, I'd rather not have to have it sitting on my computer and me worrying about how well it's working. So yes, if you have a Raspberry Pi and you care about the images that you make, yeah, this, this could be your guy. I've seen these run anywhere from 70 to 150 bucks and it goes up from there, depending on the sorts of features. Now I have seen a, a one to one copy versus a one to three. I've also seen one to five. So if you're looking to do some sort of mass quantity of duplication, you may want to consider getting something that does more copies at once. But for the average Joe, for the little guy, maybe you want to share your retro pie image with your friends, right? That's, this would be pretty cool for that, right? You can duplicate your retro pie image to, for two of your friends for the same length of time it would cause you to do just one. And of course, again, the best part is, and I can't stress this enough because this stuff makes me crazy. I like knowing that I can do this without having a computer. So that's it. Um, I was going to go a little deeper and do some of the other tests, but a lot of the things do not work as well as they should. This one-to-one -one copy is definitely the best reason to buy this unit, and probably the only reason I would totally recommend to buy this unit, if it sounds like it's a good uh, deal for you. So listen, um, if you have any questions, if you'd like me to show you something else about this particular unit, or you have specific questions about some of the features, please leave a comment. You know what, if you don't have a question, leave a comment. Did you like this? Is it fun to just look at some weird piece of hardware? Or would you prefer to have something a little more fresh, current, and mainstream? I've got more stuff coming later in the week, so hopefully we'll meet the needs of everybody. But I love these little one-off types of devices that maybe you don't even know exist. I mean, a lot of people probably don't even know that there are dedicated standalone SD copiers out there. And that's, that's pretty cool to be able to show you and have one of these handy and show you how they work. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, as usual, like this video, subscribe. Listen, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. You could be number 2,000. How great would that be? And of course, click that little notification to get notified and alerted when we produce more of these great videos for you. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and as always, thank you so much for watching. It means the world to us that you're watching and subscribing to our channel. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care.